In an earlier lab, we examined the stages in the development of a chicken embryo. How did one fertilized cell become a multicellular chicken? The answer is through the process of mitosis. During mitosis, a parent cell divides to form two daughter cells. Each daughter cell is a smaller copy of the parent cell with the same number of chromosomes as the parent cell. During mitosis, a cell goes through five phases. Prophase, prometaphase, metaphase, anaphase, and telophase. In this lab, we will prepare a microscope slide containing a sample of onion cells and examine the cells in each phase of mitosis. The bulb of the onion is a type of stem that grows underground. The bulb produces shoots, which sprout from the top of the bulb, and roots, which descend from the bottom of the bulb. The region near the tip of an onion root is called the apical meristem. The cells in the apical meristem were actively growing and dividing when the plant was alive. So we should be able to see cells in the various phases of mitosis when the root tip is examined under a microscope. Tiny samples have been cut from the tips of onion roots and preserved in an alcohol solution. We will use one of the samples in this lab. Several steps are needed to prepare the sample for viewing under the microscope. To break down the plant's hard cell walls, the sample must be soaked in hydrochloric acid for four minutes. After four minutes, we remove the sample from the hydrochloric acid and transfer it to a container with a tissue fixative. A tissue fixative is a solution that will stop any chemical or biological reactions that might be occurring so that a biological sample can be preserved for longer use. The fixative we are using is Carnoy's solution. The onion root tip must soak in Carnoy's solution for four minutes. After the sample soaks for four minutes, we transfer it to a clean microscope slide we need to examine the onion root tip to determine which end is the terminal end. The terminal end of this sample is the rounded end. Since the root is so thin, a magnifying glass will help us identify the terminal end. Once we have identified the terminal end of the root tip, we hold it down with the forceps and use a scalpel to slice off a section about two millimeters from the terminal end. This is the sample we will examine. The rest of the root tip can be discarded. We place the sample on the microscope slide and add two drops of toluidine blue. Toluidine blue is a dye that stains the DNA in order to see it more clearly. The toluidine blue needs to remain undisturbed for two minutes. Once the toluidine blue has had time to soak into the cells of the onion root tip, we blot the excess dye with a paper towel. Taking care not to touch the sample with the paper towel, we blot as much of the dye as possible from the edge of the drop. Using a pipette, we add two drops of water to the sample and cover it with a glass cover slip. To keep from trapping air bubbles under the cover slip, we place one edge of the cover slip against the slide and gently lower the cover slip into place. The cells of the sample must be in a single layer to allow light to pass through. To make certain the cells are in a single layer, we place a paper towel over the cover slip and then slowly but firmly press down on the cover slip. We must not twist or turn the sample while pressing down on the cover slip, or the cells may be destroyed. And we must not press too hard, or we could crack the cover slip or the microscope slide. Now we are ready to examine our sample under the microscope. To see a large portion of the sample, we examine it under the low power objective. 
Most of the cells will be in interphase, which is the stage of development before mitosis begins. To see details of individual cells, we will switch to the highest power objective. In this view, cells in several phases are visible. During interphase, the nucleus of the cell appears to be a cloudy blue. The toluidine blue has stained the DNA, but the individual chromosomes are not yet visible because the chromosomes are spread out in long, intertwined strands. Near the end of interphase, each chromosome in the cell's nucleus undergoes replication. Replication is the process by which a chromosome produces a duplicate of itself. Now that the chromosomes have replicated, the cell is ready to begin the first phase of mitosis, called prophase. During prophase, each replicated chromosome undergoes condensation. Condensation is the process in which a replicated chromosome twists around itself to become shorter and thicker. At this point, the replicated chromosomes are thick enough to be visible under a microscope. Each chromosome looks like a letter X, but since the chromosomes are tangled together within the nucleus, it is difficult to see their shapes. The next phase of mitosis is prometaphase. During prometaphase, the cell's nuclear membrane dissolves. Notice that the shapes of the replicated chromosomes are becoming easier to distinguish. After the nuclear membrane dissolves, hollow protein tubes called microtubules extend across the cell and attach to the replicated chromosomes. The microtubules begin to form an oval-shaped grid, or spindle, which stretches across the cell from pole to pole. The next phase of mitosis is called metaphase. During metaphase, the microtubules cause the replicated chromosomes to line up along the cell's equator. After metaphase, a cell enters the next phase of mitosis, called anaphase. During anaphase, the replicated chromosomes split apart again into individual chromosomes and the chromosomes begin to move toward the poles of the cell. Once all the chromosomes cluster together near the poles of the cell, the cell begins the last phase of mitosis, which is called telophase. During telophase, the cell forms a separate nuclear membrane around each cluster of chromosomes near the poles. As soon as the new nuclear membranes form during telophase, the cell separates into two separate daughter cells. After the two daughter cells have been formed, each cell enters interphase and prepares to continue the process of mitosis. Through the process of mitosis, an onion is able to grow and develop into a mature plant. The same process of mitosis enables our bodies to grow and develop into mature adults. In our next lab, we will explore genetics in plants. At this time, proceed with the corresponding activities. <laughs> <laughs>